Hey guys, RC here, and we are back in our DeGroff Shop single team save. They were, we're trying to build them up. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what was going on. If you didn't see the, uh, the video I uploaded a couple of days ago on uh, the 28th of December, uh, got a call that morning from my dad. My mother passed away at 5 o'clock Monday morning, and uh, I left town immediately. Uh, luckily I had videos up for Monday and Tuesday, but, um, missed videos on Wednesday. So I apologize for that, but you know, I know you guys understand, um, just ask you to bear with me here over the next, you know, week or so while, you know, by the time you see this, it might be almost a week, but, uh, you know, I, I was up there helping dad with funeral arrangements and everything and, and helping him. Uh, you know, cause he's, he's, he's a wreck, uh, as you would expect. And, uh, you know, I haven't had my moment yet, so <laughs> that's coming as well. And I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, cause I've been busy doing all kind of stuff, helping him that I haven't had a minute to sit down and process this. And, uh, and that's coming. So I know it is. So, uh. Anyway, I'm I'm trying to do some recording. I'm recording this on uh, New Year's Eve day, uh, the 31st. Just trying to get ahead a little bit. I'll be rendering videos all day today, getting those up. So hopefully I can get three or four episodes done today and get through the weekend. And then, uh, you know, I've got, you know, tomorrow and Saturday that I'll be able to do some more rendering and, and uploading uh, so I'm trying to get some recording done today. So I've got stuff to work on tomorrow and, and Saturday, Sunday, I'll be leaving town again, uh, to go back to my dad's for the funeral services and the burial. Um, so I'll be out two or three days next week where I'm not around to do anything. So anyway, by the middle of January, I should be back to normal, uh, you know, as normal as I can be, but normal as far as the schedule and releases go. So, uh, I know you guys understand. So anyway, just kind of wanted to let you know, I had mentioned it in my Bielsa journeyman video, but, uh, you know, I know some of you guys don't watch both series. Didn't know if you had seen the video that I put up, uh, right before I left the house, uh, last, uh, you know, last Monday. So just kind of wanted to keep you in the loop. And, uh, you know, for those of you that uh, took time in, in the videos or over on my Twitter feed to, to pass on your thoughts and condolences, it, it's much appreciated. Uh, you know, it is truly, you have no idea. All right. Well, DeGroff shop, we had a pretty good year last year, didn't we? Uh, so let's get into the end of season review. We'll take a look at the new arrivals. I like to sort these out by average rating if we can. Nobody played a seven, so that's a little disconcerting. Julian LaRue uh, was is a 24-year-old attacking back, eight appearances, played a six eight nine with one assist. We got a B plus grade on him, so uh, you know, good value. And minimum release clause is a little over a half a million dollars. Uh, Paul DeVries was our big signing from Telstar, 25-year-old striker. Cost us $352,000. Played a 6.86, 19 goals, 5 assists, and 33 appearances. Got a B-minus grade on him. And then uh, Makalov Banachek, 23-year-old center back. Cost us $235,000. 16 appearances, 2 goals, 1 assist. And we got a B-plus grade on him, mostly for the good value on the transfer fee. Marco Marcet, Marich, uh, was a is a loanee from St. Gallen. We got a C-plus grade on him. And then don't forget, we also signed him to join us permanently on the end of season. Philip Rasmussen, winger, 29 years old, uh, 10 starts, 10 reserve appearances, and we got a B-minus grade on him. Guillaume Shedahal, he is a 26-year-old left winger for us. He was a big signing at $7 million. Seven goals, three assists, and we got a C on him. Probably paid too much, but he is he is a quality player. Uh, Edwin Snip, taking a look at him. Dinbach, uh, or Dinbosch, $60,000. Uh, 
Uh, got uh, one goal, no assist, and 17 appearances, and we get a C grade on him. Fabian Cohen, 12 starts, six reserve appearances at center back, and we get a B minus grade on him. He was a regular for us. Bert Vanderwall, uh, he only played two matches, got one assist. We get a B minus grade, but he was more of a future guy in depth. Uh, Timofey Stretsov, a striker from Shakhtar, four goals, three assists, and 18 appearances. We got a B grade with him. We got a nice uh, re uh, release clause, 1.4 million. Theo Blondell, another striker, 255,000, 17 appearances for us, C plus grade. He didn't really perform well, so we're going to hope to see a step up from him next year, or he may be short lived with the club. Uh, Nemeth, a fullback from Willem, 450,000, uh, played a 6.49, not happy with that. C minus grade. Mike Brower, C plus grade on him, only 11 appearances, and again, didn't play well, but he was a reserve. And uh, Johnny Dockerty, 25 year old striker, did not make an appearance for us. B minus grade, uh, really was looking at him as depth. Taking a look at the season, um, you know, we did have a good season for DeGroff Shop. We gained promotion last year. And this year, our goal was to fight bravely against relegation, and we finished 11 points clear. So I think we did a really good job. We actually were up mid-table for a good while, but, you know, faded out. And uh, so we'll have to make some moves this year to strengthen the team, if we can. Just not sure what we're going to have yet, so I haven't looked at it. This is actually where we ended the episode last episode, so I haven't even opened the game here in about a week. So... Uh, trying to play catch up here with you guys as we're going through this. Moments to remember, a 6-1 win over NEC. That was our biggest win of the season. Match to remember was a 2-1 win over Fortuna Sitard. And goal of the season came from uh, our midfielder, Harms. A great strike from the defensive midfielder. A free kick from the edge of the area against FC20 again, uh, in a 3-3 draw. Taking a look at finances, we are two and a half star reputation national. Uh, current hasn't changed any. No new sponsor. Uh, so we were even on sponsorship. Broadcast revenue was down just a touch. Uh, corporate hospitality was up about 400,000. Uh, we went from 300,000 to 7.83 million in competition prize money. So that's nice. Uh, and we were up about 200,000 in match day commercial and retail. Sold seven, almost 7,300 jerseys. Shed a hole was the top selling jersey. DeVries, Rasmussen, Quasi, and Hakan Varal. Don't forget, we're probably losing him this season, so we're going to definitely have to make a move at keeper. Uh, our lineup this year. Veral in goal, Banu, Banachek, Nateb, and Nemeth on the back line. Shedahol and Quazy on the wings. Merrick and Harms in the mid. And Macaui and DeVries up top is what we mostly did. Taking a look at the goal scores here. 19 for DeVries, 8 for Quazy, 7 for Macaui and Shedahol. Assist leader was Nemeth with 6. DeVries, Harms both with 5. So good balance, I think, throughout the team. You know, even in the in the starting eleven, every starter got a goal outside of the keeper, which you know that's that's to be expected. Accolades, nothing for me. Hakan Varal was the player, the fans' player of the season. Varal was also the young player of the season. Shed a hole, signing of the season, and Pierre Harms was the goal of the season. In the competitions, nothing there. New records, three goals in a match by DeVries and three goals in a league match by DeVries. Same game, so he sets a new record. And there is our season review. So I think we did good. Uh, we were 13th by October, produced when it mattered, and, and then, you know, we finished a little below that at 14th, but still, you know, we were right there with FC20, AZ, Breda. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the year. Club vision, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see, work within the payroll in progress. And uh, for next season, again, fight bravely against relegation and then continue remaining in the Arita VC. All right, I will accept that. 
and we will talk to the club here. Let's take a look at our finances. All right, so we've got, I don't know if this is for next year, is that? So we're starting with 73, almost 74,000 in transfer fees and about 125, 130,000 in payroll budget. So we've got a little bit of room to maneuver. Oh, here we go. New, new budgets. Facilities are downgraded. All right, so let's look at those. So we're only average. So I want to improve training facilities and improve youth facilities. All right, initial budgets. 5.88 million in transfer, 976,000. So that's good. That's that's a nice little bump. Where committed spending is 748,000. Wow. Now, I guess we do have we do have a lot of players joining us. Yeah, we've got we've got what seven players coming in. Merrick, we signed on a permanent. Six of them are coming in. Who's leaving us? Stamen. Okay. All right. So let's see. Moses is a center back. Okay. Gayek is a left back center back and can play both. Vandenberg is a left back. Merrick, of course, is a midfielder, defensive midfielder. Mueller. Midfielder, defensive mid, and Diallo. Ah. First touch is incredible. So another midfielder. All right, well, there's, uh, there's the guys that are coming aboard. So we've already got a good chunk of people coming in on freeze. So I want, the, I want, I want these guys to get in probably before I really even start looking at transfers. Now, who do we lose? Expiring contracts will take off. And senior team, three-star ability. So, Viral, we need to check our promises, but I believe we're going we're gonna to lose him. So, I'm, I may have to spend some money on a keeper because I, I think that's imperative. We've got three stars everywhere. If we drop down to two stars, McCowie's two and a half, Blondell's there, Stressloff. I think I would maybe like to get an upgrade at right mid. Now that's if we continue to play this tactic as well. Now if we go with this tactic, yeah, I don't think Sayud is the guy. I don't think he's going to be good enough. He's got four and a half star potential. I mean, hell. You know, Burrell really developed for us. He started when he was 16 in goal and developed. So it's not like we can't develop him. He's got potential. Maybe that's the route to go. I don't know. He's not horrible. First touch is lacking, but we may have to look around. So all in all, uh, let's see. Are these guys... Diallo, Gayek. Okay, so these guys are already in, right? Wazy, left back, Gayek, Gayek, Moses. So there's a couple of guys that I can probably get rid of here. Snip, Cooch, uh, I would like to get rid of. De Bruyne. De Bruyne's actually not bad because he could play right back too. And he's young. I think Cooch can go. Snip can go. Cone's a center back. Harms is a midfielder. Sabuni's a left back. Sabuni's my reserve there. Now that really bumps up. We're bringing those two new guys in in the central mid. So possibly Harms becomes expendable. Because he's only three-star potential. Because Gaik's coming in. Diallo's coming in. Wreckers we could probably move. If I move both of them, I'd like to bring in one more midfielder, I am sure. And then, like I said, I could see getting, you know, moving, maybe trying to move Chelik again and bringing in another right mid. Uh, Shedahull, Brower 
Yeah, I think we're good on the left side. Brower didn't play a whole lot this year to begin with, and he's still there pushing for time. Just, you know, eh, is what it is. He doesn't have the passing or crossing that Shedahull has. Shedahull's more of an attacking mid than a true mid, uh, central mid, uh, you know, straight mid. But anyway, uh, so where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us that I need to go off and get into the offseason. So I'm going to sit here and do that for a while. And we'll be back with any transfer news as it develops. All right, let's go through some transfer business. So the first two transfers, Fati Celic and Lars McCowey, are off to Napoli for $135,000 and $1.7 million, respectively. We got D grades on both, but, you know, it is what it is. I thought that was a little, you know, high for McCowey to get, and I thought he had a really large step back last year. So, felt he was expendable. Yari Stamen goes off to Telstar for a free. Uh, his contract was up, but uh, saves us a little bit of money. And here's eight new signings coming in for us. Uh, Marat Gayek, uh, 27 years old, cost us nothing. These were all frees, I believe. A C-plus grade. Uh, Mario, Marco Merrick, of course, we know him from this past season. We signed him on a permanent free transfer, B minus. Kingsley Moses, 27 year old center back, was a free three and a half star potential and a B minus grade there. We brought in Ermin Anachik, a 24 year old goalkeeper, for $2 million, three and a half star, B minus grade. Jeffrey Regling, a 25 year old striker. Cost us 48000 We get a C grade on him. And Noah Vandenberg, 20-year-old fullback, two-and-a-half star current, a B-minus grade. And the last two, Jean-Louis Chasson, 22-year-old center back, C-plus grade. And Alsani Diallo, 20-year-old midfielder, three-and-a-half stars, B-minus grade on him. Let me welcome these guys real quick. And those guys take their numbers, so let's see what else has happened. So the transfer window has just opened. Preseason has just started. All right, let's look at the rest of the transfers. Well, that's all that... Actually, yeah, here we go. So these have not taken effect yet. They should come in today, possibly. But uh, Cedric De Bruyne goes off to RKC. 185,000. I would have liked to have gotten more, but we started off at below his value of 130 and just I thought he was expendable. He hadn't played great. And, you know, I was looking really to cut payroll. Uh Soren Cook, one of our team leaders but hadn't played a lot, uh was 30 years old. We sold him for value at 60,000. Uh his value's gone up since going to his new club. The big one that we were dreading uh, Hakan Varal goes to Liverpool, six point seven five million. I, you know, I guess just as a Dutch club, we just don't have the ability to hold hostage for big fees. Because I thought this guy was going to be possibly a you know sixty to ninety million dollar fee, and last year and this year we just never got anything remotely involved. You know, in that area. He had a long contract, and you know, you look at his value even going to Liverpool, his value's only gone up to five million dollars. So I think we've done good business there. They've overpaid at that value, right? So we've put a good chunk of money in the pocket. Edwin Snip never really played a lot for us. He goes off to Telstar, Stamen, we talked about them, Chelik and McCowie. Taking a look over on this side, Gaik Moses, that's all the guys. Uh, Anachik, that's going to be our new goalkeeper this year. So there's a look at him. He's 24-year-old German, three-and-a-half star current, four-star potential, and he is going to be our replacement. I had offers out on another keeper before this guy, and he signed elsewhere. I had an offer on him, this guy, and another guy. The other guy was going to be a little more expensive, about a million dollars, 
and I don't think he was any better. So when this guy signed, I, I pulled out of the other deal. So pretty happy with that. And uh, let's see, anything else pending? These are the guys that we're looking at. Uh, Bunu, Wreckers, Kazar, uh, Ofori uh, have offers out. We have, uh, those are loan offers. All right, so that's fine. Um, Quasi, Quasi threw a hissy in the offseason about breaking promises. We had made a promise with the team about younger players, and they were all mad. So that's why a couple of these guys have left. And then a couple of them are due to age. Wreckers 29, kind of falling into a reserve role. Um, Bunu was one of the guys that threw a fit and didn't want to hear anything from me. Uh, Quazy threw a fit, and then when I listed him, he got mad about being listed. So I don't think he knows what he wants. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let me keep going with transfers. We will see what we've got. You can see we're at $6.2 million in the bank. Uh, after the month that we just had, uh, seven million in profit for the season, and I'm trying to drag the spending down a little bit. So I don't want to sign a ton of people unless I can sell some more. So we need to cut that payroll, and we're still sitting on six point eight million in our transfer budget. So, all right, we'll be back if anything new happens. Well, that's a pretty nice deal. So this happened before I took over, right? We sold. Uh, this guy Yale Meyer to Young AZ for seven hundred and fifty thousand with a sell-on clause. He just joined FC twenty for fourteen million dollars, and that means we get one point six million. We'll get another three hundred and seventy-five thousand in installments, so that's good. Uh, we have moved uh, Seppi Records. Let's take a look at the transfers over here. Uh, Seppi Records goes to Excelsior for 375k. Honest Bunu goes to Rota for 135k. Uh, we are trying to bring in a loan player, uh, an old friend uh, from earlier days, but he has not accepted just yet. This is the other guy that I had made an offer on and then pulled it. Um, he would probably be our number one keeper, but I didn't see the point <clears throat> of, you know, having two guys coming in, be, you know, both wanting the number one shirt. So I went with the sure thing and took the one I knew we could get. And he was going to be a little bit cheaper on the salary to start as well. All right. Baba Ofori goes off uh, on loan. They're going to pick up his entire salary. And here's the guy we're bringing in, Daishan Dira. Uh, he comes in from, where's he at? Rhoda? No, not Rhoda. Sparta. Sparta. Uh, so he was on his with uh, for loan a year ago. Played well, so we're bringing him back. And he will probably be our starting left back. I need to look over on the white right wing because none of those guys are showing up on the depth chart. And we need to uh, make sure we've got coverage there. So yeah, we got a good uh, good grade on his loan. All right, here's another signing that we've made. Uh, Steven Van Zest. I think that's right. Uh, we get him on a free. He was one of the youth younger players released. And we brought three of them in on trial. And this is the one that we have gone with. So we get a C-plus grade. Take a look at him. He can play on the right side. Uh, pretty good physicals, very good agility. Five foot six, so he's a little short, but uh, that happens. Uh, very good crossing, though. So I do like that. Technique is there, work rate, teamwork. So, you know, there's some things to like here. Three and a half star potential. Don't think he's going to start, but he could challenge Quazy on that right side. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we pick up another 1.17 million in TV rights, and the board wanted to look at increasing the payroll for our physios, and I said, can we do it for our staff instead? And they said no. So, you know, I was trying to improve our staff because if we take a look at them, you can see our staff's kind of lagging behind. Not that physios are doing great, but, you know, we've hired the guys that we can fill 
without going into some of these categories that I don't think we need. This is one I can't figure out because you have your doctors and your physios. I don't know what that doctor is for because I don't see that as a job that you can apply uh, or hire. So I don't know. All right, well, that is going to probably be it. Let me go ahead and get through to the start of the season. So we'll end the episode here. When we do come back, we'll go over any last, you know, any final transfers that we make uh, because I think the squad's mostly set. We can take a look at the team report here. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Anchik in goal, Sayud still his deputy, uh, Sabuni, uh, Lafru, and Gayek are coming in on that left side as as well as Shasane. Uh, Banachek, Natev, Gayek, Moses in the middle. And who we got down here? Banachek, Cohn, Nemeth, and Vanderhorst on the right. Quazy, Blondell, and Van Zost, who we just signed. We signed him over Ham Zui, so that's why we went there. Uh, Diallo, new player coming in. Merrick's coming back. And that's why Harms is expendable. He's down the pecking order. And I want to try to get rid of Brower too. But, you know, I might hold on to him for that third third slot on the left side. Uh, DeVries up top. Stretzlov, the new guy, Regling, and uh, Blondell, Dockerty are there for depth uh, on the top. Uh, Diallo will probably move up into this number 10 role leaving Merrick to start in the midfield. This is the shape that we're looking at this year is a uh, 4-3-3 with, with a shadow striker or attacking midfielder. Sitting at the number 10, been having a lot of success with this in my solo save as well as uh, over in the uh, Bielsa Journeyman save if you haven't checked that out. So we're going to ramp that up and, you know, I still like the two up top here. And, of course, we've started to see that the uh, number 10 here is pretty good in FM21. So we were playing that last year with the with the four in the diamond. But I like I want a little bit more in the midfield, in the central mid. And I was really starting to – I was struggling a little bit with that uh, four midfielder and the deep, deep uh, midfielder last year so we're going to try this one out see how it goes so guys hit the like button subscribe let me know what you think of our signings just to remind you who those are oh and there's our first one for this year so we'll scroll back here to last year so uh starting right here with De Bruyne, that's our outgoings for this year and right here with uh diallo are our incomings a lot of freeze we paid two million for anchik and I think that's going to be the big money signing for this year. Unless I decide to maybe go out and get another striker, we'll see. I want to take a look at the finances. And, you know, of course, we have to wait and see what the scouts push across my desk because that's where I look for all my signings is through the scouts. So we'll see you next episode. We'll finalize any uh, transfers that we've done between now and then, and we'll get into our season. Have a good one, guys. Bye.